Hey guys, welcome to this new Blender video tutorial. This is Pete. Um, today we shall be creating a bouncing ball. The purpose of this video tutorial is to get you guys used to creating animations, um, creating keyframes, and creating uh, simple simple rigs uh, using constraints and empties. So I'm going to go through over everything that we're going to use. The, we're going to start with a UV sphere and mine are 10 by 6 just so that way uh, we can save some processor power so we're gonna just smooth that out and we can go ahead and hide that by hitting H hit shift A we're gonna bring up an armature uh, so we have a single bone here now and this bone by itself doesn't really do too much uh, you'll notice that it just moves around. There's no real reason for it right now. It's just a bone floating in space. So we need to make ourselves a reason for this. So what we're going to do is we're going to create an empty. And an empty is just an object that is literally empty. It's got no volume, no mass to it. So you can, uh, you can do whatever you want with empties. They don't show up on renders. So you can put it wherever you want. You can make it as big as you want, as small as you want. Whatever you feel like. So our empty is just going to be this plane axis is axes right here. And what we're going to want this to do is to control the scale on the Z axis of our bone. Okay, so you're probably wondering to yourself, how are we supposed to do that? Obviously, it's not doing anything right now. All right, well, that's really easy. Um, well, maybe not really easy, but what we're going to do is we're going to hit control tab and we're going to go into pose mode. All right, and what pose mode is going to allow us to do is it's going to allow us to create a bone constraint, and we're going to use transformation for our uh, purposes here. And what this will allow us to do is this will allow us to get that effect of a uh, like almost like a spring, like a cartoon bouncing ball. Now you notice it doesn't do anything yet. Uh, that's because we have a lot to do in this little panel over here. So the first thing we need to do is we need to grab the target. Our target in this case is empty, and we're going to change the name of this empty. We're going to change the name just to, um, I don't know, what's a good name? Uh, bounce controller. That sounds good. Bounce controller. Just so that way we know exactly what it does. It's just a good habit to get into that. So we have our, our bounce controller target targeted, and now what we want to do is we want to make it so that way whenever we move up or down on the z-axis, the bone will scale up and down on the z-axis. So how do we do that? Uh, the first thing we have to do is make sure that your source, which is our MD, is on location. And then you want to change the destination to scale. So you're probably like, oh my god, my armature just disappeared. Okay, yeah, it disappeared, but not the way you think. Right now it's actually scaled down to zero. It's almost as if it's not there. Um, but it's just, just so small you can't see it. So we have to fix that. And the way we do that is by hitting 1 in all of these. Alright, this is the bottom limit. So if you put 1 in all of these, it would get to 100% of, of the normal size. So now we have the normal size here. 1 by 1 by 1 on the z-axis, x, y, and z's. But you're going to notice it still doesn't do anything. So now we want to start making it move and stuff. So we're going to change this to 10. And what this is, this is our maximum limit here. So we'll go, well, not quite, but you'll notice that what happens is it scales on the y-axis. And that's not something we want. We want to scale on the z-axis. So how do we fix that? So you see source to destination mapping. It's scaling on the y-axis, so we want it to scale on the z. Just change that to z. Take the Z, and you just put that to X. And now, you'll notice, we have this. But wait, it's inverted. So every time we push down, it's going up. Uh, that's obviously not what we want. So the way we're going to fix that is by coming into the Y axis again. And we're going to put it to 10. So it's going to, what's going to happen is, since these are both the same number, what happens is that they, uh, they move together. So now you'll notice it moves together and it's not inverted. Okay, so what about this? As you can see, the bottom of it right here 
is where it hits. So it won't go any further than that. So we gotta change this up because that's a little high. And the way we're gonna do that is just by going down on the minimum here. Alright, we're gonna keep that up there. And we're taking ours to negative 0.8. And that makes us a pretty good size armature here. And now it moves exactly how I want it to. And now you notice that the minimum, the negative 10, right here, still works, everything works fine. So, all right, so that's fun. Um, now we can Alt H, and we have our sphere. So now what we wanna do is we wanna take the sphere, go to modifiers, add an armature, and we're going to add our armature. Okay, in our case, for this one, we're gonna use bone envelopes. Like I said, this is a beginner tutorial, so I'm trying to get you guys used to, you know, using different tools. And what bone envelopes do is kind of the same thing as a vertex group. Um, I'll just show you, it'll be a little bit easier. Let's go ahead and go to weight paint. All right, so you notice that everything's blue. That means that there's no control over the sphere whatsoever. The arbiter has zero control over the sphere. So I can move this up and down all day. It's not really going to do anything. The only place it actually does something is where the actual boat is touching. So what we want is we want the entire thing to be weight painted to 100%, which is just one. This is, you can think of this as a decimal, uh, decimal percentages. All right, so we have the weight at one. Uh, we're going to change the radius just to 200, just so we can select everything so uh, as quickly as possible. You're going to notice as I click, there's colors that appear. All right, what's happening is it's checking out each vertex that this is hitting. So let's hit all those vertex vertices. So now it's 100% controlled over these vertices. So now when I do this, I select all of these vertices. Everything is selected. It's completely red. You'll notice that we have our ball and it's going to move with this. So that's pretty cool. Okay, so let's go ahead and get back to normal. Okay, so now what we want to do, actually is this, uh, that's all right, that's okay for this. Anyway, so now what we want to do is we're going to want to start animating. Uh, the way we're going to do this is we're going to do it using an auto key animator, or um, yeah, I guess that works, auto key animator. And what that allows us to do is anytime that we move it on, on a, anytime we move, move the, any object, it will insert a keyframe for that object. So we don't have to insert our own keyframes, which is very nice. Um, so now, as you can see, we have zero on this, and this is where our object is. So now we're going to move this up to, we'll move it up to 10. All right, so now it's gonna squeeze in. And at 20, it's going to come out. And it's going to launch. Okay, so now you notice that we have, it kind of looks like, a, like, a, like it's sprung up, if you check it out like this. All right, so now what we wanna do is we wanna make this go up in the air. So we're gonna come back right one behind 20 and we're going to grab the the armature which is still going to be in the pose mode and we're just going to select it and then we're going to go to 30 uh, no we'll go to 25 we'll go uh no yeah we'll go to 30 okay so we're at 30 frame number 30 and i'll just do maybe more than 50 frames and we're going to move up on the pose mode armature so we have it like this so now, kind of looks like it's jumping up in the air. Okay, need to bring back that one. All right, so now we're gonna go to animation because you notice that it looks a little, little weird and choppy right here. And it kind of goes, stops. So let's go ahead and zoom in. This is our dope sheet. We're gonna zoom in and we're gonna come back to right here. And we're going to take these and we're going to move them back. 
So now, we should, boom, right there. That's exactly what we want it to look like. All right, now it's got to close up again. So it's got to grab our controller. We can close up. So, closed up. Now it's going to fall. So, let's see, it'll, probably, it'll take 10 frames for it to fall. So we'll hit that, grab the bone, move it back down to wherever it was, and then we'll squash it again, right as it hits. So we're going to come back here, and then right here, squash down. All right, so now what this does, it should look like it's bouncing itself, so. Alright, let's go ahead and move these frames a little bit further over. Uh, grab those. Hope these can stay over here. Check that out. We got a lot of frames over here. Okay, so what's really killing us is this frame right here. So we need to change these, so just bring them further this way. So now, let's check this out. Uh, that'll work. Let's move these every which way. Let's go ahead and delete that. Okay, so now if you look, our bounce animation has good ready to bounce again. So now, if we want, we can grab, we'll grab these keyframes right here, and then hold, hit Shift D, and just move them across right to there. All right, and that gives us an extra couple of frames here, so we'll go to 80. And now, it'll bounce again. Alright. So, that's all we're going to do for this video tutorial, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I know it was kind of not the most fun, I don't think, tutorial that I've done. But, uh, you know, just to get you used to getting controllers in and animating and used to keyframing and editing. They actually say that per second in a animation you should take about an hour so obviously we didn't do that here but you'll notice that it looks pretty good for the amount of time we spent on it, it looks like a bouncing ball which is exactly what we wanted um, you got to use learn how to use armatures bones and you got to learn how to use uh, empties as constraints and deformers all right guys have a good one um, if you guys want to keep tabs and know when the next video is going to be out Check my Twitter, which is uh, THYN Twit. Uh, you can go on Google Plus. Uh, you can also check my YouTube because sometimes I tell what my next video is going to be. So, anyway, thanks for watching, guys, and I hope you guys have a good one.